All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center. By now you know we're a revival center. And so we specialize in revival. And uh, that's what's happening when you come out to these services. You get revived. You get refreshed. You get renewed. And you get restored. Hallelujah. We love that. And I know that we need that. We need that here in, uh, in the United States and around the world. Praise God. Revival must hit. Jesus name. So anyway, I, yesterday I talked about started with Joel chapter two and verse one. And we said, uh, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Amen. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Well, that that activated and that really uh, set off a cataclysmic uh, power of destruction and decimation. Uh, and uh, it kept on moving until the supernatural army of God was actually halted by the prayers of the righteous saints. Think about that. that God's army on the move in the mode of destruction and total annihilation. When people caught a hold of this, they, they got on their knees and they fasted and prayed and made a solemn assembly and so did the priesthood. And the next thing you know, God turned the whole thing around, changed his mind and went completely the other direction. So if you have uh, the capability to get on the Internet, just go to YouTube and go to Stephen C.O.I.A. Sterling, Stephen C.O.I.A. Sterling, and you'll see Sunday's message up already on YouTube, and you can go ahead and uh, listen to the first part of this, which not just listen to it, but prayerfully uh, give yourself the opportunity to receive this wonderful message that God is unveiling. So anyway, I'm going to jump from there over to Isaiah 49, 13. We're going to run down some scriptures, and I'm going to just talk over some things. In Isaiah 49, 13, it says, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. So see, here God's showing us he wants our spirit man elevated and singing, and he also wants our soul and our body on the earth realm to be joyful. All right, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. So once the spirit of our being is elevating, it always brings joy to our physical body and our, and our mind and our emotion, our soul. So elevating the, the spirit is so important, and the spirit singing. Yeah. And it says, it says, and break forth into singing. Not only the earth be joyful, but also break forth into singing. O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people. So he begins to speak to the mountains as well. Yeah. I know that we're supposed to speak to the mountain yeah. and command the mountain to be removed. Yes. But O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He will have mercy on his afflicted. So if you're being afflicted, guess what? The good news is God's mercy is ready to hit. Amen. And his comfort is right behind it. Glory to God. So once you get your spirit and soul activated, generated, and pontificated, you get your spirit and soul actually in, in, in motion. And you get them stirred and get them, uh, you get them in a mode of spirituality with God, it affects every part of your life. <laughs> then the mercy comes and the comfort comes because you're elevated and you're pleasing God. And uh, God and his angels will uh, fraternize with you. They will develop a fraternity with you when you're that class of individual. Look what it says in Isaiah 27, 6. It says, in the days to come, Jacob will take root. We need roots. We've got a lot of people that are scaling in and out, up and down, all around. 
and they never get quiet enough and never get still enough and never get in a mode of relationship with God where they can develop roots. But it says Jacob, who is, this is symbolic of covenant. You might as well say covenant will take root. Israel will bud, blossom, and fill the whole earth with fruit. Look at that. Israel, talking about covenant people again, will bud, blossom, and fill the whole world with fruit. So fruit bearing is part of this process. As we look before in Isaiah 43 of the, of the, of the joy and of the breaking forth into singing and of, uh, God beginning to move in comfort and begin to, uh, uh, release his mercy in our affliction. And then those wonderful things begin to come. It sets prosperity in motion. When your spirit and soul are active with God, it sets prosperity in motion. Because when your spirit elevates, it can only do one thing. It's made in the image of God and it elevates. It's, on, it's only going to do, uh, it's going to praise God. It's going to sing. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to reflect goodness and gladness and thanksgiving once the, your spirit elevates. You know, a, a broken spirit will dry your bones. Now it says here in Isaiah 15 too, I will, it will blossom profusely. When the blossoming comes, wow. it ignites even another level of rejoicing, joy, and singing. Isaiah 35, 2, it will bloom profusely. Remember what we said? We just read the scripture. Right. It said in Isaiah 27, 6, in those days to come, Jacob will take root. Yeah. Israel will bud, blossom, and fill the whole world with fruit. So our fruit, we're to be expansive. We're to be on the increase. We're to reach the world for God. Hello. Yeah. And we do that by cooperating with God yes. and right. obeying God and executing his will. And here it says that blooming is going to be profuse. Yes. Isaiah 35, 2, and will bloom profusely. And then when that happens, rejoicing comes and joy comes and singing comes. And then right behind that, the glory comes. This glory is a glory that changes things, rearranges things, remakes and redo, redoes things in our lives. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. See, when, when we, we, we waft up, when we move up and when we and move up in the gradients and get higher with God and, and, and choose to live there where things are blooming profusely, then what he does, he gives glory. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. So Lebanon, Carmel, Sharon, these are all beautiful places in, in, in hills and mountains in, in, in that area. They will see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God. So you will see this action come upon you. Acts of God. The splendor of God. The specific prolific of God. The eternal supernal things of God. The miracle signs and wonders. Glory to God. How did it? And, and, and why is that important? It's important to know the earmarks of flowing in kingdom things. There's so many people that do not, do not rejoice. They do not sing. Uh, they do not praise God. And so they wonder why God hasn't sent them the glory. Is it any, we just, we went over it. What happens first before the, the profuse blooming of God's blessing comes upon us when God attaches his glory to us wow, is we get higher and higher with God. We move up out of the flesh, move up out of the natural, move up out of, of the, of the realm of the carnal and move into the indivisible, move into the higher gradients and levels with God. We were made in the image of God. We're made in the likeness of God. We're made to elevate. Everybody say, we're made to elevate. 
and were made to celebrate. Elevate and celebrate. You know, anytime you pray in the Holy Ghost, let's just say most generally, when you're edifying yourself, you always rise. And when you, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you, you're always built up. And when you pray in the Spirit, things get lighter and lighter and lighter and loftier and loftier. Because you're ascending. You're moving upwards. You're moving towards the heavens. You're moving towards your eternal resting place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's important to know. You know, in Isaiah 35, 1, I'll tell you why it's important. It says, the wilderness then and the land will be glad, and the desert will rejoice and blossom like a rose. So we talked about profuse blooming. Now we're talking of the blossoming of, like a rose, the wilderness and the desert becoming glad and rejoicing. So God converts the unfruitfulness, the unproductiveness, the dryness, the deadness of our lives by allowing us to ascend up and mend up and get higher and higher and get in a realm where we operate in gladness and operate in rejoicing. Things automatically blossom there. Even in the deadness of ourselves. Even in the death of ourselves. Amen. Um, I heard I heard this uh, this uh, phrase on one of these television shows. Uh, the man said, "I'm too old to die." Really? Yeah, he said, "I'm too old to die." I never thought about that. I'm too, old to I'm too old to die. In other words, he doesn't want that experience. You know, that that was pretty interesting, wasn't it? But yeah, why bother it? Yeah. Now, if I was younger, I'd have the strength to move on and pass. But I'm too old to even deal with that, so just let it pass me by. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Um, so in in Isaiah 33 two, it says, "O Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you." Yeah, 33 two. See that? That's where the that's the keynote of this whole thing is waiting on the Lord. Having intimacy with God. Yeah. Spending yeah. time with the Lord. People have time for everything, it seems, in the world except for the most important thing, and that is our relationship. Even, even the great Billy Graham said if he had to do it all over again, he would have spent more time in prayer with God. And he was about many things. A man like that at the end of his years saying something significant like that. Isn't that something? That's where the action is. Oh, Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. See, it takes grace. It takes that kind of special care of God to come upon us and love us that much and elevate us that much to, to give us that push and that nudge or that pull to actually want to get in that realm and operate in that realm. God has grace for that. Call on God's grace so that you can wait on him. And he, and, he, and he says, be our strength every morning and our salvation in the time of trouble. So he's calling on his strength. He's calling on his salvation. And he's asking him to be gracious so he could. So you can't, you're not going to see strength and you're not going to see salvation in your time of difficulty if you don't wait on God. You're not going to see the grace you're not going to see those things happening. And those things, you're going to have to go through tribulation and trials and struggles and, and concerns and, and anxiety and, and all kinds of things that filibuster a person when they are, are not disciplined in praying. Isaiah 30, verse 18, therefore the Lord longs to be gracious. Look at that. He longs to be, he wants to anoint us. He wants to bless us in that manner. In, in Isaiah 30, verse 18, he longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he, he, he rises to show you compassion. And the Lord, your God, is just. Blessed are those who wait for him. So the blessing comes when we wait on God. Blessed are those who wait for him. That's, and, and he gives grace and he, and he shows compassion. That's what I said. He loves us and... Um, 
And he's a just God and he's fair. He's going to make sure. Because I mean, he knows that we are in the world, but not of the world. And he knows that we have to deal with the soul and the body in this earth. And he knows it's going to take a hurricane and a tornado of power to lift us up out of the natural, out of the finite, out of the earthly. My God, to get us going in the heavenly realm with heavenly possibilities and heavenly birthings and heavenly anointings. Glory to God. So he knows what it takes and he has compassion. He can see and he can sort things out for us and get us on the move like never before. And the same theme over and over again, I find in Isaiah about blooming and blossoming. And we just read, we just read the scriptures about it um, and having him having compassion on us. Amen. And and there's just so much, you know, in Isaiah 35, 1, again, he blossoms. We're blossom like a rose when we're around him. In Isaiah 35, 2, I, w I will blossom. It will blossom profusely and, and, and rejoice with joy and singing. See, when you're blossoming, when that's, the, that's one of the keys to know. It's the earmarks. When you're rejoicing and you're praising and you're thanking God, you're actually in a mode of producing or birthing fruit. When you're at that level of praise. Yes, you're taking root and you're bearing fruit upwards. In Isaiah 27, 6, in the days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will bud, blossom, and fill the whole earth with fruit. See, root and fruit. Budding and blossoming. Praising and worshiping God. Having gladness, having joy, having singing. And, and all of these things. And, and, and he talks about the blooming again being profuse in Isaiah 35 and 2 and rejoicing Amen. right along there. And then the wilderness blossoming like a rose, you know, it's just over and over again. And then here in. Um, yeah. And here in, uh, in, in Isaiah 35, 10, it shall blossom abundantly. Abundant. See. We already we already talked about that. Amen. Yeah, in Isaiah twenty five nine, it attaches salvation yes. to waiting on God. Yes. This is the Lord. We have waited for Him. We will be glad and rejoice. What happens when you're glad and rejoice? Salvation is appearing. It says we, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Yeah. So when you have that gladness and rejoicing in your heart that's manufactured by the Holy Spirit, that's manufactured out of your born again spirit, and you get into attunement with, yeah. with spiritual things, yeah. your singing and worship and praise will actually, actually cause salvation to surface. Yeah. It will activate the modes of salvation. Hallelujah! When you get in that place, when you can sing the songs that God wants you to sing, you know, you know, He talks about that in, in the New Testament when they come together that they're supposed to bring their psalms and their songs, and if anybody has a praise, that's the way. That's how it gets tuned up. That's how the whole thing gets launched. That's how whole service gets elevated and moves into the celestial realm. And look what it says in Isaiah 65, 14. My servants will shout for joy with a glad heart. But you will cry out with a heavy heart and wail with a broken spirit. Do you see the difference between the two? I, and I pointed out, God just pointed out right here and I said it earlier. Yeah. My servants will shout for joy with a glad heart. But you will cry out with a heavy heart and wail with a broken spirit. Broken spirit. So many people live in brokenness. That's without a solution. They don't have the shout. You know, did, did the man of God say, where is the shout in Israel? Where is that shout? Where is the God of miracles? Where is the eruption of victory in the camp? Where are the songs of Zion? Who hung the, who hung the harp on the willow tree? Yeah. Where is the sound Amen. of victory? He didn't have any. 
in the camp. See, there's sounds. There's significant things that happen. And all these things are connected. Look, it's connected to fruit bearing. Setting down the root. It's connected to intimacy with God. It's, it's connected to prosperity. It's connected to the manifestation of salvation. That's why the devil has robbed. Yeah. He knows the way he was there once. He was a covering cherubim that stood before the ark in heaven. And he protected the glory and he led the singing and the praise in the ark. And he hates it when people press in and really get a hold of the real thing, the raw thing, the for sure thing. He can't stand it. My servants will shout for joy with a glad heart. You know, and Mary Hart doth good like a medicine. If you want to get healed of heart trouble, guess what? Get glad. Get glad. Get glad. Amen. That'll heal a lot of hearts. A Mary Hart doth good. I don't see a lot of people being happy about a lot of things. That's for sure. Look what it says in the way back. Everybody say the way back, the way back is the way we started. Is the way we started. So if you look at Isaiah 35, 10, it shows you the way back. So the redeemed of the Lord will return and enter Zion with singing. Woo! Zion is our mother, it says in, in, in Hebrews. Yeah. At Zion, there's a numerable company of angels that are at work. And when we enter into Zion, you will enter Zion with singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Gladness and joy will overtake you. Gladness and joy will overtake you. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. They've got to go. No sorrow, no regrets, no sighing, no woe, woe is me. No doleful, woeful me. Amen. God just moves on you with everlasting joy, gladness, and joy will overtake them. But they came in to the, to the into Zion with singing. It says they were crowned with everlasting joy. The redeemed of the Lord, those that are blood washed and blood bought, those that stayed with covenant. Those that are faithful and true. Can you say amen? amen? Come in singing and crowned with everlasting joy. Glory to God. The Bible says the joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And you know what he says about his word? And I read it yesterday in Psalm 119, 162. It says, I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. And I know I'm going to get victory here at Dallas Revival Center yes, in, a, in a greater measure than I ever have before. And I'm not stopping until I have a heart glee and no. joy dancing up and down inside my chest until I am so full of the Holy Ghost that the glory of God is just ventilating through me until... My feet can't stop dancing and my hands can't stop clapping and my mouth can't stop shouting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that's what it is. Dreams are always fulfilled at Calvary. And I declare to you that we're, we're in a spin and we're going to win. Amen. From center to circumference, God has it all covered. Everybody say, from center, from center to circumference, God has it all covered. All now, all the way into the forever. Amen. Say this with me, fresh as the bright blue sky. I will not be denied. Amen. Say, I'm on my way to that special place of God's mercy and grace. And say this, some are not worthy. They're cheap and plastic. It's too bad. 
Whoo, hallelujah. But we thank God. Uh, let's see where we're at here, about 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't have, I don't want to go on much longer, but. Um, You know, it says in Isaiah 52, 13, in the TPT, look, my servant will prosper and he will succeed. 52, I mean, he makes a point blank statement. Look, my servant will prosper and succeed. He will be highly honored, raised up, and greatly exalted. Look at that. He will be highly honored, raised up, and greatly exalted. See, when you get elevated with God, exaltation automatically takes place. Transference automatically takes place. Changes automatically happen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, amen. When you get to that place of act, acting out uh, heaven on earth, you know, Isaiah 46, 13, I am bringing my righteousness near. I will not be far away. Uh, and, and my salvation will not be delayed I will grant salvation to Zion and adorn Israel with my splendor. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Scripture says in Romans 10, 11, anyone who believes in him will never be disappointed. Hallelujah. And so we've got it. Everybody say God's got it. God's got it. And we've got it. And I've got it. Thank you, Jesus. And so we declare this last scripture in Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is their vindication, and it is from God himself. Give the Lord a hand clap, say amen. Vindication is mine. Vindication is mine, and God's heritage is mine. Give the Lord a hand clap. Say amen. There it is. Wow. Well, I think that's enough for now. That, that's enough to whet the appetite to let people know that, man, it's how important it is to elevate with your spirit and soul. It'll pull your body up. And then when you're up there, all the earmarks hit you. Singing and praising and joy and gladness and all of these elevated things happen and then it sets off the roots going down growth coming up yeah. a boom and blossoming forth of fruit yes. and then it, it it sends an earthquake through the earth and through the heavens and it causes god's salvation to activate hallelujah and so you can participate without debate that yeah. God is God all by himself. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Help us to do it, Let me read this last scripture. Micah 5, 9. Thine hand shall be lifted up against thine adversaries and all thine enemies will be cut off. Woo! Did you hear what I said? All your enemies will be cut off. Thine hand shall be lifted up against thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. Micah 5 9. Micah 5 9. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Pray, God, right now that you just uh, send out your thunderbolts, send out your lightning. Strike. 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 And be accurate, be precise in your strike. Take down the Leviathan. Take down those spirits and those fallen angels and those demons. God, shoot out from your sling and mortally wound the head of the stronghold and the strong men that are ruling over your life now in Jesus' name. Knock the devil dead and cut off his head. Give the Lord a hand clap. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just go with a praise. Go with a shout. And go with God. God bless you. Steve Sterling. Talk to you later. Bye-bye for now. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's not bad for you, boy. It's all true.
Amen.